All right. Um, we're solving this problem for some guy in the Netherlands. Are you ready? Are you? Okay, you're nodding yes. All right. We need to solve for x. First thing I want to do is I want to combine like terms. We have an x squared over here, but on the right side we have an x squared over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2x squared from each side of the equation. When I do that, these x squared cancels. 3x squared minus 2x squared will just give us 1x squared. So I'm going to write it x squared, and then I'm just going to bring everything else straight down. Plus x equals 12. I'm going to move everything to one side of the equation because that'll make things easier for me to solve it. I'm going to subtract 12, subtract 12. These 12s cancel, and you're left with a 0. And on the left side, you have no like terms. So it's just left with x squared plus x minus 12. Now from here, we can solve the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all of this. You can rewind and check out what I did before if you feel like it. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here. So, do, 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 do. Let's rewrite what we have left up here. Now, this, equ this equation that we have, x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0, is the exact equation that we started with. I just moved things around a little bit using mathematical rules. From here, you can go one of two ways. You can either factor or you could use the quadratic equation. The equation is very complex and will blow anybody's mind if they don't really understand math that well. If you factor, it makes, makes things a whole lot easier. Basically, in this quadratic, you can factor it into two binomials. So, x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero. I can factor it using uh, a reverse of the FOIL method. I really don't know if they have the FOIL method in the Netherlands or not. Um, let's hope that they do. But basically, I have two binomials that when I multiply them together, I should get that. I know how to do this off the top of my head. You do x and x in the first spot. And now you need two numbers in the second spot. You need two numbers that when you multiply them, you will get negative 12. Now I know that I'm going to have 3 and 4. But then the question becomes, which one needs to be negative? Well, I know that it has to be the 3. The reason being, if you multiply negative 3 and positive 4, yes, you will get negative 12. When you add negative 3 and positive 4, what will you get? 1. Positive 1, which is exactly what that number is right there. If that 1 were negative, then this would be a different answer. So basically, we have these two things equal to 0. Now, when you multiply two things and equal, to, equal them to 0, if you have um, a times b equals 0 or x times y equals 0, mathematical law proves that you need to have one of those terms being 0. So what that really means in layman terms is either that term will be 0 or that term will be 0. We don't know which one is which. So I'm just going to do x minus 3 equals 0 x plus 4 equals 0. Again, we don't know which one is, so we're going to assume that both of them are. Solve for x. Plus 3, plus 3, x equals 3, minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4. And there are your two answers. I've already double-checked them using my great mathematical mind. They are correct. Yay!